So, last time we made a color wheel in our make day. And you may have recalled we looked at how reds and yellow make orange and red and blue make purple and blue and green. I mean, blue and yellow make green. And we talked a little bit about those tertiary colors. When uh, you mix primary and secondary, you get um, those tertiary colors. And we'll talk more about those. We talked about complementary colors and analogous colors. And so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the color and how artists use color. As you look around you, how many colors do you see? Do you see some colors more often than others? Artists' surroundings often inspire the colors they choose to create their artworks. So we're going to be looking today at how artists choose the colors that they're going to use in the works of art they create. Inspiration of surroundings. What inspires you as an artist? Many artists are inspired by nature and their surroundings, like gardens or any other places they spend time in. Let's explore, oops, let's explore how artists' surroundings can inspire them to create their artwork. So if we look at Claude Monet's work, he had these beautiful paintings that he did in his gardens and around his home. Monet chose to use realistic colors to recreate his garden. The colors he used to recreate the garden in his artwork are very similar to the colors he saw in the garden in real life. The use of direct colors might mean that Monet really liked the appearance of the garden and found it perfect in its natural form. This could have inspired him to recreate the garden in a realistic way. In other words, he liked those colors so much, he decided not to take that artistic license and change those colors, but keep them very much the way that they were. Vincent Van Gogh did these paintings, did a painting here of the light of this little cafe. This is the cafe for real, and this is the painting he did of that little cafe. In this painting by Vincent Van Gogh, uh, it was it was inspired by a real life real life cafe in Arles, France. Van Gogh used contrast to show bright lights of the cafe against that dark night sky. Van Gogh recreated what the cafe looked like at night, which might tell the viewer he enjoyed visiting the cafe in the evening. Isn't that nice? Ansel Adams was a photographer. He enjoyed capturing pictures in black and white. He was very interested in capturing elements of nature that show detail, like crisp leaves. Adams' surroundings inspired him to capture the fine details that he saw in nature. And if you can see those fine little veins in every little leaf, he captured every single little detail. Frida Kahlo, boy, she's one of my very favorites. She was inspired by her surroundings too. She was a Mexican artist who enjoyed creating self-portraits, many of which included animals. And she would often be painted and surrounded by uh, pictures of jungle or leaves and that sort of thing that showed her environment. So let's look at some of the colors we might see in the environment. As you've learned, artists are often inspired to create their artworks by what they see around them in their environments. But they can also be inspired to create their artworks using materials found in their environments too. Sometimes artists will only use natural pigments to create their artwork. And so when we talk about pigments, we're talking about those pure color that come from something like a plant or a flower those things that we use to make color and all kinds of other paints. In Australia, artists use the bark of trees as canvas to create artworks on. The paint is taken from local and natural resources. Using natural resources to create an artwork helps the environment to stay healthy by not creating additional waste.
Once artists decide on what color they want to use in their artwork, they also need to decide if they want to change the hue of the color. The hue is the color or shade of the color. A hue can be changed by mixing the original color with gray, black, or white. This mixing results in the creating of tints, tones, or shades. A tint is when you add a little white to a color. A tone is when you add a little bit of gray to a color. And a shade is what happens when we add a little black to a color. How does color change? Color is a hue, but there are tints, tones, and shades. Do you know how to change color? Let's give it a go. Here we have some bright blue paint. Blue is a color, or a hue. There's also white, black, and gray. A tint is when you add white to a color. A tint is lighter than the original color. A shade is when you add black to a color. A shade is darker than the original color. A tone is when you add gray to a color. A tone is not as bright as the original color. It's a little dull. A very bright color has intensity. Some colors are bright and some are dull. This is called color intensity. Look at the colors you made. Which one do you think looks brightest? Which one looks the dullest? You've learned all about hue, tint, tone, shade, and intensity. In this example, you used paint, but the same ideas apply to other media, like chalk pastels. Give it a try sometime. That's a great little video, and it has a lot to do with what we're going to do this next or this week in our make day. We're going to use the slide board to see how you can use or how you can change a hue by mixing it with white. So, if you have a, a natural blue and you start to add just a little bit of white, it gets a little less intense and goes a little lighter. When you continue to add even a little more white to that, it gets even a little less bright, a little less intense, and a little lighter. And it continues until you can get this very, very light, light, light blue. The very lowest intensity, if you will. And that works the same with all the colors. So we're going to do our studio time this week. And we're going to do something a little differently than the way they're doing it. We're going to create a, a flower color wheel as well. And um, I, I think ours is going to be slightly like this, but also uh, slightly different as well. Um, we're going to make our own as opposed to using these. Because um, I like it when uh, to see what you all draw. And so we're going to create six of these little uh, flowers to create all kinds of pretty little tints and shades and tones of our primary and secondary colors. Now let's not forget, we're going to talk about our attendance question really quick. We talked about this person once before. Sir Lawrence Alma Tadima. Um, but I wanted to bring him up again because in a few uh, days I'm going to start working on another, oops, I always do that, on another uh, uh, painting uh, that is in the style of Sir Lawrence Alma Tadima. Sir Lawrence Alma Tadima. He was a Dutch painter and trained at the Royal Academy of Antwerp. And this is the painting I did last time of his, and I think I showed that to you. Uh, I'm going to do another one of his, though, that I, I think is really interesting in the same sort of style. Uh, but we'll take a look at, uh, at it when I get it done. So uh, just the, the, the preview attended class to answer today, the attendance question answer is Sir Lawrence Alma Tadim. And I'm going to leave that up here for a few minutes while, or for a few seconds while we talk about your make day. So when you come this week for your make day, uh, you want to either bring watercolors or crayons, 
maybe some colored pencils. Uh, but something that you can try and mix a little black and white into. If you can use paints, it'll work a little bit easier than if you're using crayons. Uh, the color pencils blend pretty good, uh, depending on um, what kind of color pencils you're using. Um, but water, color paints, uh, pastel paints, finger paints, anything like that. Uh, acrylic paints, those um, temper paints, those all work real well for this. And of course, if you don't have any of those, as always, you are more than welcome to use the um, um, Chrome Canvas uh, to do yours as well. All right, guys, that's our uh, lesson for today. Try to keep it short because we're going to take uh, a little extra time on our make day this week. Have a great day.